Ladies and gentlemen, I have always opined on this platform that in politics nothing happens out of pure coincidence and that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing happens in politics out of mere coincidence. William Samoya Raputo yesterday attended a church service in Homabay County. And that event was actually intended to achieve a specific political objective. Because William Ruto originally was not supposed to attend that church event, which was a fundraiser. But he made last minute changes to his program. And he attended the event. In fact, for those who were keen, even the seat and the microphone William Ruto used yesterday are not the microphone and the seats preserved for the president. Which means he had a clear mission in Homa Bay. But in this video, I want to explain to you guys why William Ruto's mission in Homa Bay failed. The moment William Ruto landed in Homa Bay, five things were running in his mind. The first thing which was running in William Ruto's mind was how he could install new leadership in Nyanza. The same way he did in Mount Kenya. In fact, if you look at the people who accompanied William Samoya Ruto, most of them are people who are opposed to the leadership of Raila Amolodinga. So from what I'm thinking, William, Ruto's, William Ruto has this mission of disrupting Raila Odinga's grip in the, in the Nyanza region. And that's why he wants to install new leadership. That's the first thing which was in his mind as he landed in Homa Bay. The second thing which was in William Ruto's mind, and this I'm even reading from people online, is the possibility of a by-election in Homa Bay County. The truth of the matter is that governor, former Nairobi governor Evans Kidero has petitioned the election of Gladys Wanga as the governor of uh, Homa Bay. The other truth is that Gladys Wanga is actually a non Railodinga supporter. She cannot betray Raila Molodinga. It's also a known fact that Evans Kidero has expressed his interest in challenging Raila Odinga for the Luo Nyanza leader, leadership. And one of the questions which most of uh, Luo people are asking is why Kidero did not attend this event. For me, Kidero never attended this particular event because he didn't want to be seen to be a Ruto's project. Well, in real sense, that was one of the things which took Ruto to Homa Bay. And I can, I can assure you that that particular petition, as much as it's a, a legal process, there must be political interest behind it. So that's number two. That was the second thing which was running in William Ruto's mind. The third thing which was running in William Ruto's mind was how he can use the church to persuade the people of Nyanza region to support him the way he used the church to change the minds of the people of the mountain. The truth of the matter is that majority of the people of the mountain, Mount Kenya, are poor. And it's normally easy to manipulate the minds of the people who are poor. Nyanza, there are people who are poor, but mentally, it will be very difficult for Ruto to use the church to persuade them. So that's something which was coming, which was running in William Ruto's mind. He used the church successfully in Mountain. The fourth thing which was in William Ruto's mind was how he can split Nyanza region. You know, there's always this attempt to split Nyanza into two. In fact, initially, it's Moi who split Nyanza because Nyanza has the Kisi, the Gusi, the Kuria, and the Luo. Moi decided to split it into Luo Nyanza. So that when you talk of Luo Nyanza, you talk of uh, the four counties of Luo Nyanza. And then when you talk of um, 
Gusi and Korea, Moi tried to split it because it was very difficult to talk of Nyanza without including them. So Ruto has that particular idea. And his idea is to split Nyanza into South and Central. That's one thing which also came out clearly. And you could tell by those who accompanied Ruto. Those who accompanied Ruto were actually mostly from, from Central Nyanza. And once they covered Ruto, the people of Homabi and Bigori started questioning why Ruto was being received by people from Kisumu, people from Siaya. Because you could see Oota there, you could see Kenobura there, you could see you could see David Ochieng, you could see Gombo. Those are the people who received Ruto in Homabe. In fact, at some point people were like, they were glad that the people of Kisumu and Siaya received Ruto in Homabe. Basically, something is turning out that the people of Homabe are now asking themselves, where are their sons and daughters? And lastly, the, the fifth thing which was in William Ruto's mind is the 2027 election. There's a possibility that a fallout might, um, might occur. You don't rule out. William Ruto understands politics between him and Rikati Gashagwa. So he's already walking around with Dindi Nyoro. Why Dindi Nyoro? Dindi Nyoro was one of the people who used to attack Raila Molodinga viciously and ruthlessly. Walking with him in Raila Molodinga's stronghold means he's giving Dindi Nyoro opportunity to be accepted in Raila Molodinga's stronghold. So that if William Ruto will persuade those Raila Molodinga strongholds to support him, then they will agree to go with him. Because if Ruto were to follow it with the Rigavi Gashagwa, Dindi Nyoro will automatically become his running mate. <laughs> And again, William Ruto is already campaigning. In the last election, William Ruto campaigned immediately after the election. Until the election. This time around, William Ruto's moves are towards 2027. Would want a situation where, in case Raila Odinga will not be on the ballot, Lu Nyanza will consider him. Because the other person they can consider is actually Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. So for me, those are the five things which were coming into William Ruto's mind as he landed in Homabe. But all those missions, if you ask me, failed. Why? Before we get further, in case you are watching the channel for the first time, please take a second, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support, because without that support, the channel cannot be where it is now. Let us get back to the main issue. Why do I feel very strongly. By the way, don't forget to press that thumbs up button. Why do I feel very strongly that the main reason why William Ruto's trip mission failed was his failure to invite the local leaders. In Mount Kenya, William Ruto succeeded largely because he worked very closely with elected leaders. That was his first step. Work, work closely with elected leaders. The fact that he left out elected leaders has really exposed him. Because Kenyans are now questioning why, what was his mission, why he went with people who are not elected, you know, things like those. And some of these elected leaders will now then develop strategy on how to deal with him whenever he's coming, whether to cooperate or not. In Mount Kenya, William Ruto's strategy from the onset was to influence those who are elected. That was in 20, I'm talking of 2017. In, uh, I'm talking of 2017. As we were going for 2017, William Ruto realized that a fallout between him and Uhuru was likely. So he identified members of parliament who were likely to be very strong and even would challenge him in 2022. He ensured they were never elected. People like Kabogo, Martha Karwa, and the rest were never elected. Once that was achieved, then... He, after the elections, he ensured that those who were elected because of him tore his line. So he started going to their areas, working with them very closely, giving them tenders, putting money in their pockets. So by the time Uru Kenyatta realized, he already had majority of elected leaders on his side. If you listen to William Ruto's speech yesterday in Homabe, he also alluded to the fact that he's going to work with elected leaders. This trip failed because he did not have elected leaders. Number two, I also tend to think that it's about timing. Timing. 
the people of Nyanza actually voted for Raila Odinga to the last man. Even in Migori where William Ruto camped fully in the hope that someone like Obado was going to persuade people to vote for him, they never. William Ruto got votes in, in Migori only in Korea side. But even those could not be compared to what Uhuru got in the last election. So which means in this election, Raila Odinga performed better in Nyanza and in Nyanza than before. So when the elections were lost and Jose Camargo came up, people really sympathized with Raila Odinga. As much as people never went to the streets to demonstrate, majority of people were really hurt. You can even feel the mood on this channel. In fact, on this channel alone, we'd be like now over 200,000 subscribers. But on the day the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Uhuru, or of uh, Roto, I saw close to 1,000 people unsubscribing from the channel because they didn't want anything to do with the politics. In fact, the reason why I've not held uh, the, the, the live show again, which I'm planning to do again, was because so many people were bitter, especially after Raila Odinga lost the election at the Supreme Court. You remember even when David Ocheng shifted to Ruto camp, the kind of mood in his own backyard, so people were bitter. And the majority of those people are still very bitter. The truth is, his timing might be okay, but I don't think it's right for me. I don't think. But his politics, maybe that's what he wants, to, to come to people when they are still hurt so that he can engage their true feelings. The, 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 the third reason why I think this trip failed is actually because of the faces behind it. That strategy is wrong. You know, so many people have always tried to finish Raila Odinga by using others. Even Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, Kenyatta and Moi tried using others to stop them. It never worked. That can work in Mind Kenya. It can work in other places. In Nyanza, the people who are rejected are, are viewed as traitors. So it will be very difficult for Ruto to succeed in Nyanza using the same same those faces. Because most of these people, um, I, I saw a comment by my friend uh, Mwalimu Owedi. Mwalimu Owedi was one of the people who was leading campaign for Raila Odinga. Once Ruto was uh, elected, he started moving from one radio station to the other, telling people how, you know, what, what, you know, so many things. People like those, are never taken seriously by the laws because they view them as people who are only interested in their own interest. If Raila Odinga had become the president, someone like that gentleman would today be singing praises of Raila Odinga. So those people William Ruto is using, some of them will be his downfall. There are people who have constantly, even right now they are supporting uh, Ruto, they want the Lewis to support Ruto. The moment Raila will support Ruto, they will leave. That's their nature. And those people are known perennially in this land. So those people, those faces, will automatically fail Ruto. And lastly, I think the politics of money. It has worked before elsewhere. But the law I know, the law Oksechi, the only people I know who can, uh, you can give your money and then they can still reject you and abuse you over your own money are the laws. So the, the fact that the politics of money is being tried is good for the short term for Ruto. People will eat his money. Migori people ate William Ruto's money. They attended his rallies. They ate Obado's money. When the time came, they voted for Raila Odinga. So if Raila Bruto is keen on winning the hearts and the support of the Luo nation, it's possible. But not through the route he's using. I don't know what you think. 
that's my take thank you guys and please may you have a good day bye bye